Hello, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company, and I have a couple of pens here. They're Parker IMs. These are uh, pens that I have not really carried very much before. I dabbled in them a couple of years ago, haven't looked at these for a while, uh, but they came out with these two special edition colors. One is called Big Red, which harkens back to the Parker Duofold back in the 1920s. It came out in this kind of this red color, got the nickname Big Red. Uh, and then it's got this blue-black color, which is really nice too. Uh, so it's a nice pen. I wanted to show it off to you, show you how it writes, maybe uh, start a conversation a little bit about Parker, because it's kind of an underrepresented brand uh, that I've been a retailer for for some time now. So that's what I'm going to do in this video here today. This here is a, uh, the packaging for the Parker IM. Slide it out. It's uh, got the same box that you might have seen in some of the other Parkers, like the uh, Urban one. Uh, it's, you open it up and it's got this nice Parker logo here and kind of this fabric backing. It looks a little classy. Uh, you know, for pens of this price range, it's kind of hit or miss whether you're gonna get a decent box, but this one's nice and sturdy. Uh, really looks nice. So Parker did a good job with this. Um, you can actually pull this whole insert out here and that reveals the instructions and warranty information. Now this is actually kind of funny almost, but like look how, how crazy that is. It's like a Star Wars, you know, kind of do 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 do. Um, this is all just kind of warranty information here. I'm holding it upside down, I can't even tell. Uh, it's got the little English version there, it's a lot of other languages, and then it's got kind of breakdown instructions for every single version of every pen they carry, but uh, the one that we're worried about here is the fountain pen. Uh, now it doesn't have any written instructions, but it does have a kind of this pictorial diagram, which I find to be helpful somewhat, but that's because I already know how to use this. I think if this was my first introduction to a fountain pen, it would probably I'd probably be pretty lost. So I'm really glad that I have myself in this video. <laughs> That sounds weird, but I'm really glad that I'm doing this video for your sake because it'll really help you to get a better understanding of how to ink up and use this pen. Uh, so you're looking in here, it's got the insert and I'm not really gonna use this anymore. It's got these little straps that hold it in place. I don't use my boxes for storage, so I don't really worry that much about them. Uh, but anyway, you can see here that it's got a cartridge that comes with it. It is a Parker proprietary cartridge it is of high ink capacity, which is awesome, but really limited color selection in the Parker cartridges. So that's kind of a bummer. I'm not that big on cartridges myself anyway, really just because there's so many great colors of ink that come in bottle form that I personally would prefer to refill this with an ink syringe from another bottled ink or get a converter. Now this pen does not come with a converter. When you have pens in this price range, personally, I feel they should come with converters, uh, but you know, it's just kind of hit or miss sometimes whether it does and they chose not to include one in here, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, but that said, the pen itself is pretty nice. It's got a nice weight to it. It's gonna be around the same weight as like a Lamy All-Star. Uh, so if you're familiar with how that feels, it's gonna be comparable to that. It probably, it probably looks heavier than it actually is because it's a brushed aluminum. So it's not, you know, it's not solid brass or this really crazy like heavy metal material. Uh, so even though it's all metal, it's still fairly light, which I think is really good. I think most people generally prefer that when it comes to their fountain pens. Um, it's got this kind of uh, chrome trim, which a lot, of the, a lot of the IMs have that. I think they've also got one, maybe two pens that have a gold trim as well, but I really like the chrome trim in this finish. Um, I've got the other color here. This is the big red, and the other one I have here is the blue-black one. So these are both special edition pens. Again, like I said, I'm kind of dabbling into Parker. I haven't carried them very much in the last several years, so I'm dipping my toes in the water with these ones. So I'll be able to tell you in the video what I think of this pen, but I don't necessarily know like the full-on history and everything, and I apologize for that. But what I do know is that this color is called Big Red because Big Red was the nickname for the red Parker Duofold that came out in the 20s uh, that was this color and it was kind of an homage to that pen. And that's why we came out with it here. Not sure about the history of the blue black, to be honest with you, but that's what I was able to dig up a little bit. Anyway, the pen itself is nice, fairly light, good size. 
Um, not too big, not too small. It's going to be a good all-around pen for small hands and big hands. Uh, the grip here has got this nice kind of uh, brushed thing. It's brushed at kind of a different angle than the rest of it, so it's got a different look to it, and that's kind of cool. Uh, maybe I can show you up close what that actually looks like. So you can see here there's not too much fancy stuff going on here on the finial. It's got the classic Parker arrow going on on the clip. The clip itself is fairly rigid. Uh, not, not too rigid, but it's going to hold itself onto your shirt pretty firmly. You can see here that brush pattern that kind of goes along the length of the pen. It's got a center band, really thin center band with the Parker logo on there. And then you go down to the other end, you've got just a very simple finial with some crud on the end of it that I'm wiping off. It's a problem with high def, as you can see all that stuff. Uh, but anyway, so there you go, and then you can uncap the pen, and you can see here the grip has got kind of that brushed look. I know you got mad glare going on, but it's brushed in kind of a diagonal direction, which is neat. I like kind of that brushed, non-brushed look that it's got going on there. You see it's got the Parker logo in the middle there, with a little ornamentation on the nib. It's got a nice swoop on the feed. You know, my buddy Drew here says that uh, he loves a feed with a good swoop. Um, and if you've seen the Parker Urban video that I did, it's actually, I believe, the same nib and feed setup on the Urban as well. Uh, but the Urban, it's kind of tucked away more into the pen. So that's kind of interesting. But it looks to be the same kind of deal going on there. The pen's only coming in a medium nib, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's a solid nib. Uh, writes really nicely, so it's not too disappointing. And then the thing just unscrews here to reveal the rest of it where you'd install your cartridge and your converter right in there in the back of the feed. So the gripping the pen itself is pretty good. Um, because it's a snap cap, you don't have any threads and whatnot to worry about, so that's really kind of nice. No matter where you hold this pen, it's going to be comfortable. If you're holding it right on the step, yeah, okay, it might not be as ideal as a flat part, but it's not going to be too bad. I, th I think it feels pretty comfortable no matter where I hold it. Uh, when I hold it here, my thumb tends to rest kind of right up against that, and it actually kind of plants it and writes really nicely. And because you got the brushed grip going on here, it's not really uh, problematic in terms of slippage and stuff like that because the finish on the grip uh, gives you a little bit of something to hold on to. Filling the IM is a pretty straightforward operation. If you've got a cartridge, it's real easy. All you got to do is open up the pen, shove that cartridge onto the back, and you're good to write. The pen just unscrews the body back there. The cartridge, you've got the tip here. It comes with a blue cartridge, but if you're looking at it there, you just shove this part on here, give it a good push, and that will penetrate the end seal here, and then the ink will be able to flow to the feed. However, I want to show you how you use it with a bottle. So it does not come with a converter. You need to buy that separately. That's a little bit of a bummer, but you know what? That's life. Uh, it looks a lot like the standard international converter, which you may have seen before. I have one right here. It's a pretty classic looking one. Now you can see, just looking at the two, they look a little bit different. They look similar, but different. You know, it's got the smoky body here. Body? Is that what part this is? I don't know. Smoky translucent, whatever part that is on the converter there. It's got a red O-ring, and then it's got a black tip, and that's kind of unique to Parker. Uh, and if you look at the ends, it's hard to see here, but the opening is a little bit bigger on the Parker than the Standard International. So if you're trying to fit the regular Standard International onto the Parker, it is just not going to fit because it's not big enough. So you got to get the big boy here. you got to get the Parker one. It's really pretty easy, though. Once you get the right size one, it just fits right on there. Fits really securely, really snug. Uh, I like that. I like a nice snug fitting converter onto the body because you don't have to worry about the grip dropping off of the pen when you go to fill it in your ink. So this is a solid one for that. I got Nulu's Black here. It's just a classic ink that I like to use all the time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I've got the ink kind of filled here, so I'll see if I can show you a little bit. You want to make sure that when you're filling that your piston seal is all the way down. So the way you do that is you just screw it in one direction. If it goes up, you're going the wrong way. you got to make sure it goes down. And the red O-ring kind of helps to show that a little bit, actually. Um, you want to make sure that you're inserting the entire nib of the pen all the way into the ink, because where it's going to fill from is this little filler hole right here up where the back of the feed meets the grip section. That's where it's got to get into the ink. So if you're not filling all the way up there, then you're going to have a problem. And then you just unscrew it. The piston on that converter is going to go up, and you're going to have ink in your pen. 
There's a little bit of air there. If you want, you can have the converter go down and back up and that will fill it some more. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. It's long enough already. You get yourself a paper towel or something like that. Um, now there's ink all over this grip and that's okay. You just kind of wipe that off. It may take a little bit of work, but there we go. Now you see why this paper towel is covered in black stuff. <laughs> there we go. I usually don't sweat too much when ink gets on the nib itself. So it's gonna happen, it's an inevitable fact of life. And then once you've got the ink in there, you're all good to write. You just take the body, screw it back onto the grip of the pen, you know, wipe off any ink that you might've gotten on there from your fingers, and then you're good to write. So now I have my IM all filled up. It's good to write. It only comes in a medium nib, so that's what I have in here. And the first thing that I notice, I noticed when I touched it to the page is how smooth the nib is. I wasn't expecting it to be this smooth, but it really is smooth and it flows quite well. I guess I wasn't completely shocked because I'd had a little bit of experience writing with uh, the Parker Urban, which seems to have the same kind of nib and feed setup that this one does. So it wasn't a total shock but even still, I really like it. I really like the way this feels. Now, I'm generally a fan of medium nibs anyway, so to me it wasn't like all that big of a deal, but um, some of you I know like finer nibs and stuff like that, and I'm sorry. It's gonna write like a Western pen, so it's gonna write you know, a little bit broader, I guess, than your, your Japanese counterparts. But there you go, that's dark. This is new, there's black. Um, to give you a little bit of a comparison, I have a Parker Urban here. I figured, why not? Whoops, hello. So I thought, why not go ahead and just show you Parker Urban, medium. Not shockingly, it looks very similar. And then the last one I wanted to compare it to is have a Lamy uh, All-Star. That converter just keeps liking to say hello. Maybe I should move it. <laughs> so I got a Lamy with a medium steel nib here, Lamy All-Star. The Lamy definitely, I don't know how much you can hear, but I can definitely hear more of the resistance as well as feel it. Not that I got anything against Lamy because I'm a big Lamy fan, um, but there is a little bit more resistance to this nib than there is to this Parker one. Voila. So it's gonna be pretty darn similar. Um, you know, I'm not seeing a major difference in the way that the Lamy is writing compared to the IM. If you're a fan of Parker, then you're probably gonna like the IM. Now this is an IM Premier um, and uh, it's got that special color. So it's gonna be available through 2014, that's what I'm told. So I don't know exactly how long it'll be available, but at least now you're a little more educated as to what this pen is all about. There you have it. If you have any questions about the IM or about anything else pen, fountain pen related, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, or you can always leave me a comment on YouTube or Ink Nouveau. Thanks so much for watching today and right on.